Trading futures can be incredibly intimidating when you're first getting started. Their crazy leverage can move incredibly fast and are honestly not something that most people should even consider trading. However, if you're watching this, I am just going to assume that you're aware of all of that, have decided that they do in fact make sense for you, and are now just trying to figure out the best way to actually trade futures within Thinkorswim. So that is exactly what we're going to be going over in today's video, and we're going to start by going through the actual process of placing the trades, how to add some custom scripts to actually better track those futures positions, and a few of the different ways to set up the platform to be more conducive for futures trading. Now, beginning with probably the most important question that you guys have, how do we actually place futures trades within Thinkorswim? Now, honestly, there are probably over a hundred different ways to place a trade within here, whether that be right from the trade page up here at the top, through the charts page over here on the right hand side, through the active trader tab over here on the right, or even by using the watch list over here on the left hand side by simply clicking on the bid price or asking price at the contract. However, most of you guys watching are probably wanting to set up your futures trader window specifically for futures contracts. And in order to do that, we can simply come up here to the trade tab at the very top of our screen. We can then look down below in the list of tabs and select the one marked futures trader. Now this page is really just a template and one that you'll want to customize specifically for futures, adding those tools or indicators that make the most sense. Now, in my case, looking down below, you can see this page is a bit of a mess. And if this is the first time you've came here, yours will look exactly like this. So let's say in this very first example, I want to clean this page up a little bit. And let's also say that I typically only like to trade and track just one single futures contract at a time. So what I want to do in that example is actually start by getting rid of all of these other grids over here. And I can do that by coming up here to the grids icon in the upper right hand corner. That'll then display all the grids that I could open up, but in my case, I actually want to downgrade to just one single grid or one single chart. Now that I did that, I actually want to clean this page up a little bit further by actually clearing everything out. And what I want to do is come over here to the right and deselect the trade tab. I'm also going to come down below and deselect the dashboard button as well. And now you can see here that I basically just have a clean slate. So now that I did that, I'm going to come up here and add the charts page as well as the active trader. So now looking here, you can see I've got a much better view than I had just a few minutes ago. Over here on the left hand side, I've got a nice little chart of the futures contract I'm looking at. And then over here on the right hand side, I also have an active trader window, which we'll discuss a little bit later, but it's probably going to be the fastest ways that you guys can place a trade within here. But before we actually dive into that and dive into how to place a trade using this little window over here, let me first give you a breakdown of some of the basics. First off, you guys can see the symbol of the futures contract we're trading by coming up here to the upper left hand corner. And in this case, you can see we currently have pulled up forward slash ES or the S&P 500 minis. In order to change that, you can see here I would simply click on it and then type in the other futures contract we wanted to go to. In this case, I'm going to throw in forward slash NQ and hit enter on the keyboard. So now looking here, you can see I've got the NASDAQ minis pulled up and you should have noticed that all futures contracts within Thinkorswim have a forward slash in front of them. And in order for us to see all the other futures available within Thinkorswim, we would simply come over here to the drop down arrow on the right hand side. That'll then open up another little pop up window and we'll simply come down here and select futures. That'll then let us see all of the other futures contracts available over here on the left hand side and scrolling through here, you can see there are quite a few. To the right of each of those symbols, you can actually see a description of what that actual contract represents. And then moving even further to the right, we can actually see the tick size, tick value, and initial margin requirement for that particular futures contract. So for those of you watching who are completely new to futures, this might be a completely foreign concept. However, it's important to remember that futures are not standardized. They all move differently. They have different tick sizes, meaning the smallest increment that they move in. Each one of those ticks make you or lose you a different amount. And each one needs a different amount of money to actually trade it. So going through a real life example for just a second, let me go ahead and scroll up to a more popular futures contract that you guys might be trading. And in this case, you can see here, I've got forward slash ES highlighted. Looking over here to the far right hand side, you can see the tick size for the S&P minis is actually 25 cents, meaning that is the smallest increment that these guys move in. To the right of that, we can then see the tick value telling us what does each one of those ticks make us or lose us per contract. So in this case, every one tick move or every 25 cent move in the S&P is going to make us or lose us $12.50. 
Now finally, just the right of that, we can then see the initial margin requirements, which is basically how much money we need in buying power in order to trade just one single contract. So in the case of the S&P 500, we would need $11,000 in buying power in order to trade just one single contract. But as I was just saying, this can be incredibly confusing to new people because every single futures contract is going to be different. So if we were to scroll up and instead look at, let's say, crude oil here, you can instead see the tick size on crude oil is a penny. So this guy moves in penny increments. Every penny is going to make us or cost us 10 bucks. And the initial marginal requirement for crude oil right now is $9,400. So keeping track of this information can be a little bit of a pain, especially if you guys like to flip between multiple different contracts. And one way to combat this is actually by adding a custom script to display this at all times at the top of our chart. Now, I already have this custom script loaded in my platform, but I'll be sure to load it down below in the description as well as the pinned comment. And you guys can simply copy and paste this into your own platforms and use it for yourself. Now, once you've actually imported it to your platform, the way to load it on your chart is simply by coming up here to the studies icon in the upper right hand corner. That'll then open up a window down below where we can see all the studies we currently have over here on the right hand side and then all the studies we could add over here on the left hand side. Now, the one that we're going to be using is actually called futures. So I'm going to come up here to the search box and type in futures. I can then see it down below as the very first result in the list here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that hit add selected down in the lower left and then hit OK on the far right hand side. So now looking up here at the top, we can now see this brand new script that I just added. It's this kind of yellow bar at the top of our chart. Now, the way I have my platform set up right now, it's a little bit hidden. So let me come over here to my active trader and make this a little bit smaller. My active trader doesn't need to take up that much space. And now coming back up here, let me first describe what it is it is actually showing us. So right here, we can actually see the same information as before. The tick size for the NASDAQ is 25 cents. Each one of those ticks or each one of those 25 cent moves is going to make us or lose us five bucks per contract. To the right of that, we can see what a full one point move is going to make us or cost us. So if we had one single contract and the NASDAQ went up one point or one dollar, we would have made 20 bucks if we had one contract. Now, finally, just to the right of that, which we didn't have on the previous screen, is the notional risk for this contract, which basically means how much of the NASDAQ are we actually controlling with just one single contract. In this case, you can actually see with one single contract, I'm controlling over $270,000 of the NASDAQ. So you can see here that is a lot of leverage. For those of you just getting started, you guys might want to use the micro versions of these instead. So we could actually do that by coming up here to the search box again. And all I'm going to do is actually throw the letter M in front of the original symbol. So in this case, forward slash M and Q. Now looking down below, we can see we're looking at the micro NASDAQ futures. You can see here that the tick size is still 25 cents. So it is still moving in 25 cent increments. But instead of each one of those contracts making us or losing us five bucks with every tick move, it's only going to make us or cost us 50 cents, which also means a one point move is only going to make us or cost us two bucks. And now we're only controlling twenty six thousand dollars in the Nasdaq. So clearly the micros might be a good starting point for those of you who are just getting started with futures. That way you don't put on too much risk at any given time. Now, not every futures contract will have a micro version of it, but the most popular ones will. So like S&P 500, Dow Jones, NASDAQ, gold, silver, all of those will have micro versions. And basically, it's just going to have the letter M in front of the original symbol. But now that we got that out of the way, let's next go over a couple different ways to place a trade within here. Now, the first and kind of more methodical method is by coming up here to the top and simply clicking on the price of this futures contract. So in this case, you'll notice that as soon as I click on it, a little drop down menu appears where we can then specify we want to buy or we want to sell. Now, you also probably notice that there's also a button over here that says calendar, but 99% of you guys watching this will never click on it. What you'll instead do is say I want to either buy or sell a single contract at a time. So in this case, let's actually say we did. We wanted to buy one micro NASDAQ. So I'm going to come over here to the buy button, then come over here to the right and select single. You'll then notice that as soon as I clicked on that, the order ticket gets built down below. And that's what this green line is right here. So looking here from left to right, it does say we're about to place a futures trade. We're buying just one single contract. 
You can also see the expiration, but this is just going to be defaulted to the active contract as of right now. And we can see the current price. We can see we're using a limit order and we currently have the order marked as a day order only. In order for me to change that, I could simply click on the thing I want to change. So in this case, let's come back over to the left and say I wanted to bump this up to, let's say, five contracts. I'll throw in five here. Let's also say I only wanted to buy this if it dropped down to 13,490 even. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that, type in 13,490. I'm going to go ahead and leave this set as a limit order and I'll also leave it good for the day only, meaning if this order does not fill by 4 p.m. Eastern today, just go ahead and cancel it. Now that I'm happy with that, we'll simply come down here and select confirm and send and it'll then give me a little confirmation box to confirm everything we just filled out. So right up here, you can see the cost of the trade, which is basically just the commission cost for this trade. We can see the buying power effect. And if I actually wanted to place this trade, we would simply come down here and select send. Now, as soon as I do that, we can actually see the order working a few different places. First off, I can see it over here on my chart. So right here, it says I want to buy five contracts and we can see a little green line going over to the right to 13,490. But I can also see it over here on my active trader if I scroll down a little bit. You'll notice a little green bubble just the left of the price that I set my limit order to. And right there, you can actually see it just filled. Now, once it fills, there are a few different places that we can keep track of it. And let's first begin by keeping track of it here on the active trader. So coming up here to the top, you can now see my current position right here. It says I currently have five contracts in this account. To the right of that, it says the average price that I bought it for. So I bought it for an average price of 13,489 spot 25. Right below that, you can actually see how much I'm up or down on this position since opening it up and how much I'm up or down for the day only. Now, besides keeping track of it here, you guys could also come back over here to the monitor page at the very top of your screen. From there, looking down below, we can then see my futures position right here. It says forward slash MNQ. It says I've got five of them, the trade price I bought them for, the current price, and then over here on the far right, how much I'm up or down since buying them. Now, while we're actually on this page, I'll also mention that you guys can come here to close out your positions as well. So let's say later down the line, you wanted to close out of this MNQ position and you just wanted to sell it with a market order. So what we could do is actually come over here to the symbol and simply right click on it. From there, we'll get a drop down menu with a bunch of different options, but we just want to find the one mark, create a closing order, then come over here to the right and see all the other order templates available. Now, don't worry if I were to click on any of these, it's not going to instantly place my trade or anything. It's just helping me to build out the trade. So the first one is going to default to a limit order at the current price. The second one assumes I want to put in a stop order on this position. And then the third one is an OCO bracket order, meaning I want a take profit order and a stop loss order working simultaneously. Now, in my case, remember, all I wanted to do was close this thing out with a market order. So I'm going to come up here and select sell five MNQ contracts. You'll then see it builds out an order ticket and down here below, we can see what it's saying is I want to sell all five contracts. Right now, I've got the current limit price in here, a limit order type and the day time in force. For this one, we want to come over here and flip the order type over from a limit order to a market order, meaning I want this order to fill instantly and I'll take whatever the current price is. Now that I'm happy with that, I'll simply come down here and hit confirm and send. Confirm everything looks right in this confirmation box. And if it does, which in this case it does, so I'll come down here and hit send. You can then see in the upper left, it actually tells me that that order just filled. And I could also come over here to the monitor page and confirm it by looking at the filled orders for today. Now, don't worry, I know I went through that very, very quickly. So we're going to spend a little bit more time on it. So let's come back over here to the trade page and select the futures trader window to go to that same screen we had up before. So again, just as a little reminder, the way that I placed that trade before was by simply clicking on the price up here at the top, then selecting buy single. It then built out the order ticket down here below. And again, this is the more methodical method. If you guys prefer to go through it a little bit slower and be a little bit more precise with the actual price that you're setting, this is the way I would do it. Now, for those of you watching who want to trade as fast as possible, the active trader tool is going to be your best bet. So let's come over here and delete this out of here. And now let's go through this active trader a little bit more in depth. Coming up here to the top, you'll actually notice there are a few buttons up here. And before we even dig into them, I want to hit this little arrow on the left hand side to expand the menu. Looking down below, you can now see the quantity of contracts that we're going to trade anytime I click on a button within this active trader window. 
So in this case, anytime I click a button, we're going to be buying or selling one contract at a time. So for example, if I were to come up here and select buy market, what would happen is I would buy one contract at the current market price. If I were to come over here and hit sell market, I would be selling one contract at the market price. And if I didn't have any contracts currently, that would be shorting this futures contract. Now, just to the right of that, we also have the cancel button, which is going to cancel any working orders we have on this particular future. Below that, we also have the reverse button, which is going to basically just reverse whatever your current position is. Now, in my case, I don't actually have anything in here right now, but let's say I had five contracts. If I were to come down here and hit reverse, what I'm essentially saying is I want to sell the five I currently have and then sell another five on top of that. Now, if instead I was actually short, let's say two contracts and I were to come here and hit reverse, I'm saying I want to buy back those two and then I want to buy another two on top of that. So again, it's essentially reversing your position. You were bullish before, now you're bearish or vice versa. Now, finally, the last default button at the top here is going to be the flatten button. And that's kind of like a fail safe. It's basically saying, get me out, get me out immediately. I want out of this entire position. So whatever your current position is, it's going to basically put out a market order to close it and cancel any working orders that you might have. Now, right below that, I already mentioned it, but this is the quantity button. So you can just quickly taper up or taper down how many contracts you're currently trading, or you could just specify it by typing it in right here. Besides that, we also have the template button, which is currently marked single, which just means we only want to place one trade at a time. But this is where you guys can come later down the line to create templates. So things like bracketed orders or OCO orders, things like that. Now, finally, the very last button up here at the top is going to be the auto send button, which just means anytime I click a button from now on, I want that order to go out immediately. No questions asked, no confirmations. So just so you guys have an idea of what this is going to look like, let me go ahead and check mark that. Check mark auto send. Let me next come up here and hit buy market. You'll notice that that order fills immediately. And now it says down here, I've got one contract. This is the price I bought it for. And then this is how much I'm up or down since buying it. To close out of that, I could either come up here and hit flatten or I could hit sell market. And now I've closed it out. I'm back down to zero contracts in this account. Now, besides those big buttons at the top, you'll also notice this ladder down here below with a bunch of prices going down the center. Now, this little pricing ladder shows you a lot of information. And starting off over here on the left hand side, we can actually see how many contracts have traded at each individual price today. So right here, you can see at the current price, 13,493, you can see there have been 2,529 contracts traded at this price today. To the right of that, you'll also notice a bid column and an asking column, and you'll notice there's a bunch of numbers inside of those. Now that's actually acting as your level two data. So those are actually open orders to buy or sell this contract at a particular price. Now in the bid column or in this green column, these are all the open buy orders. And in the red column or the asking column, these are all of the open sell orders that are resting out there right now. Now, in order to actually place limit orders and stop orders, we'll actually be using this active trader ladder right here. And all we have to do is actually click on the price that we want to place that order at. So just as an example, let's actually say I wanted to place a limit order to buy it at, I don't know, 13,486.75. In order for me to do that, I'm simply going to move my mouse to the left of the current price right there. And you'll also notice a little bubble that says buy one contract with a limit order. And if I click there, a limit order gets submitted to buy it at that price. I could also see it over here on my charts tab as well. And what I could also do is actually drag that order up or down if I wanted to edit it in some way. So in this case, I'm dropping it down to it looks like 13,483 spot 25. And if I let go, my order has been edited. In order to cancel that, I would simply hit the little X button over here on the right hand side. Now on the flip side of that, if I wanted to put in a limit order to sell this contract, I could again come over here to the right, but this time I'm going to go above the current price and put my mouse in the red column or the asking column. So now looking here, if I were to click in the little red box, just the right of 13,495, what I'm essentially saying is I want to short this contract at that particular price. Just like before, I've got the little order ticket over here on the chart and I could again drag it up or drag it down. And to cancel it, I could either hit the little X button over here or over here, or I could come up here and hit the cancel button at the top of my active trader window. I'll go ahead and say cancel all here. And now my orders have been canceled. 
Now, there's a lot of other cool stuff that you can do with this Active Trader, but I've already made a much more in-depth video on it, so go ahead and check that out. It is more focused on stock, but it's the exact same premise. Now, besides everything we've mentioned, what I would also recommend you guys do is create a specific watch list of the futures that you want to keep track of. So in order to do that, we will simply come over here to the far left hand side where our current watch list is at. And in this case, you can see I currently have the options watch list. What I'm going to do is go ahead and click on that. And now looking here, we can come up towards the top and select create a new watch list. In my case, I'm just going to go ahead and name this one futures new because I think I already have a futures watch list in here. But once I've named it, I'll simply come down here and hit save. And now in order to add brand new symbols to this watch list, I simply need to come over here to the symbol box and start typing in my symbols. So just going through a few quick examples, we'll add the S&P minis. Let me go ahead and click in the next box down. I'll add the micros for the S&P. I'm also going to add, let's just say NASDAQ and Q as well as forward slash M and Q. Now, if I also wanted to keep track of those other positions that I'm currently holding, I could come down here and hit the little plus sign in the lower left hand corner. And here in the list, I could actually select that I wanted to add a brand new watch list gadget to the left hand side panel. So now looking up here at the top, you can see the futures new watch list. But then down here towards the bottom, we've got the brand new one, the test watch list. So now what I want to do is go ahead and click on the name there of test. Look up towards the top here to my personal watch list where all of the watch lists I've already made are stored. And if I come over here to the right, I can actually see the futures watch list that I made in the past. So if I were to go ahead and click on that and let me give it a little bit more space here, you can now see a list of symbols down here below. So again, ES is going to be the S&P, the micro version, NASDAQ, micro NASDAQ, Dow Jones, micro Dow Jones and gold. So again, definitely recommend that you guys make a watch list of futures that you track or trade actively so that you guys could just very quickly flip between them. And in order to flip quickly between them, if you came over here and link this gadget to your chart, so click on the little chain link here and then select red, I could then come up here to my actual futures trader button and link this one to red as well. So now that all my gadgets are linked together, if I were to come over here and let's go ahead and select ES, You'll now see that my chart on the right changes to ES and my active trader over here changes to ES as well. Coming down here to MES, you'll see I flip quickly to MES. So now I can navigate around very, very quickly. But hopefully after all that, you feel a lot more comfortable with how to trade futures within Thinkorswim and a few of the different customization options that you have available within here. Now, if you do still have questions, which I'm sure you do, or recommendations for other video topics, please let me know down below. And also, if you were looking to learn more, YouTube seems to think you'll find this next video helpful as well, so go ahead and check it out. But that's it for now. Have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I'll catch you on the next video.